Moving swiftly along from our previous lesson about periodic functions and the amplitude spectrum, let's just look into a simple example, you know, to really get a firm grasp of what I was saying just now. So, remember, the Fourier series, what we have learned that the Fourier series was defined for the whole real line. So, we are working in reverse now, getting the Fourier series of certain periodic functions. Remember, periodic functions are functions that have a period, usually defined by capital T, and the function repeats itself. You know, and we have learned that the Fourier series does repeat itself, so basically, we can write a Fourier series of those functions. The periodic function G is defined by this one over here, okay? And G T plus, so G T plus 3 is equals to G T for all T. Now, this statement tells us the period of G, okay? I just would like to let you know that. Most of the periodic functions will be defined in this way. So, we would define um, the function G T to equal to something in terms of T, in this case, it's T squared. This will also give us the period, okay? And then after that, we just to confirm it, we got um, g t plus 3. This one is actually the period over here. Uh, so in this case, 3 is the period for all t. You know, in a way, if I think about it, t can be defined from 0 to 6, in which case the fundamental period is 3. So I guess, you know, just have to be conscious of all, all the other ways, or basically how the period fits in, okay? Uh, most of the time, you'll get it like that, so it shouldn't be a problem at all. Now, what does this graphically tell us? This graphically tell us is that first, let us plot Okay, the function gt for the, the domain of t from 0 to 3, okay, and which is given by t squared. So, I've done it over here. So, this one is basically our function gt. I mean, function gt from t equals uh, from 0 to 3, which is one over there. But what does this statement tell us? This statement tells us that now the function of g has a period of 3, so we can, you know, just basically take the same uh, function from 0 to 3 and repeat itself, or, you know, translate itself, or whatever word you want to use it. If, if we have to do it, we'll do it this way. See, um, the graph goes here and it goes backwards. So it, it goes on for the whole real line. Okay, um, it shouldn't be a surprise to see that the graph repeats itself. The difference in the domain should be the same. So the difference here is 3, the difference here is 3, so on and so forth. Okay, so that is what we call a periodic function. Okay, periodic function of G. Our last point to note is that why are we using the variable t? You know, we could use the variable x or, you know, z or whatever we want. However, most times, especially as now we're going to move on into the application, we're going to use a variable that represents time. So, you know, what other variable to use than t? Okay, so basically, you know, g represents time. So, we want to find the Fourier series of this function over here. Um, the same, the method is essentially the same, but now we just need to be, you know, very conscious of what we're integrating to. Okay, right now, we have already seen that t is defined from 0 to 3. So logically, we want to integrate from 0 to 3, which is actually what we're doing. And it's also convenient because there's a 0 over there. This should not prevent us from, you know, knowing that we can also integrate from minus uh, 1 divided by 5 to 1 divided by 5, or integrate from, let's just say, 4 to 7. As long as the limits of the integral um, are the difference in it is equal to the period, that is still, we are still at liberty to do that. You know, maybe in more advanced problems, you want to change the limits, or, you know, for certain proofs. Okay, so, you know, this is what we have over here. Now, it's 1 divided by t, so now this becomes the period, all right? So, remember, a naught is 1 divided by t integrate from 0 to 3 of the certain function. This, we've got 3 over there. Now, a n is 2 divided by t. Do not be confused, and I would like to, you know, point this out in case that, you know, you're in an exam, right? We recall the, when we are finding the Fourier series from minus l to l, a n is going to be equals to 1 divided by l, okay, right? But right now, a n is going to be equals to 2 divided by t. I stress again, I mean, and the integral accordingly, the integral sign accordingly. I stress again that the difference is due to substituting t with um, t, l with t divided by 2. It has nothing to do with the even or odd functions, you know, it certainly doesn't have anything to do with that, okay? Uh, basically, if you were to just substitute t divided by 2, it's like here, this is what you get, okay? But just be very mindful. Now, in a way, we're just multiplying everything by 2. Uh, this is what we have over here. Now, I would like to tell you that this is an even function, this is an even function, okay? Uh, yeah, they are, so it's an integrating even function, but we cannot do anything with the limits because, you know, they are not symmetrical. Okay, I hope you understand that. So we got this one over here, bn doing the same for bn is 2 divided by t. Okay, now that the period is t, in this case it's 3, okay, I emphasize that again, you know, we get uh, minus 9 divided by n pi. So now the forward series is given by this thing over here, right? This big expression over there. And now we want to move uh, from the Fourier series, which is the standard form, or basically the form that I've always been using, to the phase angle form. Um, which, which we'll see why is it useful in a minute. The phase angle form, okay. Now what do we need for the phase angle form? Remember, we need basically three quantities for the phase angle form. Uh, one of them is omega naught, one of them is Cn, which is the harmonic amplitudes, and then one is the uh, delta n, which is actually the phase angles. 
Now, why am I stressing angles, uh, amplitudes? Well, it's basically because, you know, we can let n vary. When we let n vary, you know, the value is going to vary. Likewise, when we let n vary over here. I'm not saying angular frequencies, okay, for omega naught because omega naught is always a constant, okay? But, um, you know, you should say harmonic amplitudes and phase angles because, you know, as we move on to our, our analysis and as we move to real-world applications, that actually does matter on what harmonic amplitude that we pick because there's a lot to pick from. So, uh, we want to move into the harmonic, uh, no, the phase angle form of the Fourier series. We need to calculate these values over here. So, Cn is given by An squared plus Bn um, squared the square root, which I've done over here. And basically, the um, phase angles is given by inverse tangent minus Bn and um, An. Okay, so uh, which is going to be given by that over there. So if I were to write the whole thing out, um, shouldn't be that difficult. GT is going to be equals to the A naught stays the same. So basically, we're three over here. Plus, we open up the summation n equals to one to infinity, but we'll substitute C n inside, which is this one over there. So it's n squared pi. Uh, sorry, nine divided by n squared pi squared multiplied by. Uh, square root n squared pi squared plus 1 uh, close the square root and then later we multiply uh, multiply that by cosine n omega which is this one over here so it's basically 2 n pi divided by 3 plus the phase angles which is delta n or in this case is inverse tangent n pi so this is our phase angle form of the Fourier series so why is it important well it's important because now let's move into the amplitude spectrum which I've uh, conveniently drawn at the top right corner. The amplitude spectrum is a plot of Cn divided by 2 versus um, n omega. What is n omega? n omega, I say again, is the nth harmonic. Basically, if n is a larger number, we are taking higher frequencies. Okay, now why is C divided by 2? Well, it's basically a convention that I'm not too sure why you know, people use it, but I guess you know, electrical engineers can tell me why. So it's Cn divided by 2. Cn again is the harmonic um, amplitude, which is given by this over there. So if, I, if we were to take certain values of the n harmonic and of the um, Cn divided by 2, this is the graph that we get, okay? This is called the amplitude spectrum, and what we have over here is what we call discrete frequencies. It's not continuous. The amplitude spectrum is not continuous because, as you can see, we're only taking integer multiples of the, the omega naught, okay, as well as of Cn. So this is the, it's also called the discrete uh, spectrum, I, I think so, discrete spectrum. Okay, or it has discrete frequency, so it's called the dis discrete spectrum or the line spectrum. What this tells us, okay, and I'm doing my best to explain it because I still not, not to show myself. Um, you see, the harmonic amplitude really gives us the amplitude of, of a certain um, output, okay, of a certain circuit. Now, as we know circuits, we're also allowed to change the frequency. So, you know, it kind of tells us as we put in higher frequencies, what is the um, amplitude that we will get? Now, as you can see from this graph, okay, the drop in the C n divided by two is quite dramatic. Okay, it, it falls about by half, and then later it, it gets half again, and it goes all the way to you know zero as long as you reach the six um, um, six n harmonic or the sixth harmonic. So what it really tells us is that you know in the output of the circuit. If we wanted to, we could uh, apply what we call a filter that would filter out the higher harmonic. So let's just say we don't want the second harmonic afterwards. We put in a filter, cancel all these harmonics out, okay? And all we're left with is the zero harmonic, which I forgot to mention, okay, C naught is given by A um, not um, the magnitude of A naught, okay, which is three um, over here, okay, and um, the first harmonic, which is these two over there. Okay, I don't know why, maybe to conserve power or what is it? as well as solving differential equations, which I'm learning right now and it's quite difficult, okay? Uh, basically what we're doing is that we're taking the separate harmonics as well as the separate uh, uh, harmonic, uh, amplitude harmonics, okay? And then we are, you know, solving them, taking the sum to solve the whole differential equation, okay? Which is a, which is a mouthful, okay, what I just said, but, you know, just to brief you guys on, you know, what's coming up next. Okay, so um, finding the phase angle form of a certain uh, periodic function g and the amplitude spectrum. Thanks.